The first weapon you get in Fallout 3 is the BB gun, and very quickly, you discover how useless it is. Even a rad roach, the weakest and most pathetic of all the enemies in Fallout 3, may take two or more shots to kill. Early on, most people rely on the 10mm pistol Amada gives you when you wake up. But what if all you had was that BB gun? Can you beat Fallout 3 with only a BB gun? Every mother knows that your skills in Fallout 3 are affected by the points you put into your special stats. Because we'll be relying on the worst weapon at our disposal, agility is the primary stat to focus on. For skills, we go with small guns obviously, medicine, and speech. I got the 10mm pistol from Amada so I could sell it later, then picked up my BB gun and BBs from the table, and my adventure begins. Out into the wasteland, my first stop was Megaton to sell all the weapons and armor I didn't need and to buy every stim pack I could find. After all, with such a shit gun I'm gonna be taking a lot of damage. Unfortunately, Moira doesn't sell BBs. She doesn't yet understand how much she just fucked up. In an attempt to make her pay for her misdeeds, I spent a considerable amount of time trying to kill her. I was hoping I'd be able to kill her with a single shot, but even when hidden, it's just not possible. At least not at my level. I left and was on my way to Smith Casey's garage. Because I only had 41 BBs, I avoided as many enemies as I could. Then I foolishly fought a bloatfly and was down to 32 BBs. I couldn't remember exactly where the garage was located, but Tenpenny Tower loomed over the horizon, so I stopped in for a visit. I bought a few more stim packs, I passed a few skill checks, I had a talk with Alistair Tenpenny while he aimed a sniper rifle at my goddamn chest, and I knew what I had to do next. Unfortunately, I did not have the explosive skill required. I needed to level up, and what better way to do that than by killing the ghouls pestering the Tenpenny residents. That did not go very well. No, it did not go very well at all. Rather than wasting all 26 of my remaining BBs, I ran for my life and got out of there. I still had not yet leveled up again, so I decided to just carry on with the main quest. By this point, Dr. Braun is more of a nuisance than an actual challenge. As is tradition, I leave him trapped in Tranquility Lane forever, not even stopping to say hello to the man before leaving. Dad was finally freed and explained the plan. Rivet City. But that's really far away and Moira Brown isn't even dead yet. See you, Dad? I've got a bitch to kill. I had finally leveled up again and was able to raise my explosive skill up to 25 and attach a bomb to old Nuki in Megaton. Then I returned to Tenpenny Tower to let Burke know that the show was ready to begin. I hit the switch, watched the explosion, got paid, hit the BB mother load with Chief Gustavo, and realized that my work had not yet been finished. Moira isn't dead yet. The fear in her eyes when I told her she was going to die was palpable. You could almost taste it. Party's over, kids. Now we march towards Rivet City. After I told Aunt Boy to piss off and die, I once again encountered the curse of Grandma Sparkle. I killed her, looted her shack, and my game crashed. The next time around, I ransacked her ass and then killed her. Was I talking about her shack or her old wrinkled flapjacks? You be the judge. I picked off a few raiders from a distance, discovered the Citadel, then the Jefferson Memorial, and finally arrived at Rivet City, a place known throughout the entire wasteland as the premier source of BBs. This shrapnel character had 200 BBs on him. What a weirdo. Who just carries around 200 BBs? After speaking to Daddy, I took my 300 BBs and was off to clear out the Jefferson Memorial. And oh boy, what a shit show this was. If you happen to get lucky with your shots, it might only take you 15 shots to kill a super mutant. What I could do is cut together a tasteful montage paired with some sort of royalty-free fortunate son type song. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna let you see the entire fight between myself and a super mutant. I had to clear out all the super mutants, so this happened a lot. I saved the sexiest, uh, uh, most attractive super mutant for last. The super mutant brute in the rotunda. I started the fight with 169 BBs, and when the mutant's body hit the floor, I was down to 139. Something I had not yet considered was weapon condition. Because, let's be honest, who the fuck ever in the history of Fallout 3 used a BB gun enough to the point that it almost breaks? There were a few more mutants outside, but Father and some scientists had arrived, so I left them to deal with the mutant. I got the basement stuff taken care of and returned to watch Poppy die, and then something magical happened.
I foolishly assumed that Dr. Madison Lee was not an idiot. She's a scientist. Scientists can't be stupid. That's one of the commandments. It's right after the one about not yelling at llamas. Madison Lee is an idiot, though. As the Enclave raided the Jefferson Memorial, I fled straight for the escape tunnel. I thought Maddie would be right behind me. She was not. She was too busy being unconscious upstairs, which meant I had to kill several Enclave soldiers with the BB gun. Not easy or fun. We eventually made it to the Citadel, where the Quartermaster was rude to me when I asked about BBs. Rothschild wasn't as rude, seeing as he gave me the location of Vault 87. When I got in Vault 87, after the disaster that was the Jefferson Memorial, I decided to just avoid all the super mutants. Well, not really avoid, more like just ignore. My boy Fox was more than enough to handle those slimy bitches. And then Fox died. Which meant it would be up to me to get the Gek. Luckily, believe it or not, I had planned for this by buying a radiation suit. The bad news was that I only had a few doses of Radex and ran away. Things got real hairy real quick, but I did retrieve the Gek. All that was left was to run past a dozen super mutants with rifles and into the loving arms of the Enclave. My strategy of ignoring all enemies worked out much better at Raven Rock than it did in Vault 87 or with those ghouls. Back at the Citadel, the Quartermaster still didn't have any BBs, but it didn't matter. We've got a giant robot. The 15 minutes of madness were, as expected, maddening. Not challenging, just boring. Especially when Liberty Prime decides to stand there and do nothing. Inside the memorial, I avoided the Enclave real good and entered the Rotunda. Sentinel Lions decided not to join me, so I had to kill Colonel Autumn and two Enclave soldiers by myself, with a BB gun. Autumn was surprisingly easy to kill. The power armor clad soldiers were not. By the time I was the only one left alive, I had used every healing item at my disposal. We're not out of the woods yet though. See, Sentinel Lions was too busy giving hand jobs to the enemy to come and help me. Madison Lee won't alert you about the radiation if Lions isn't there, and the doors are locked behind you, so I couldn't go out there and get her. I was fucked. That is, until I restarted the game. Lions had arrived, and we could finally end this goddamn nightmare. There's just one last little detail. I was practically glowing with radiation after Vault 87. I wouldn't last three seconds in the chamber. I nearly killed over inserting the virus into the purifier. So, like the true hero I am, I sacrificed Sentinel Lions, dooming her to a painful death from acute radiation syndrome. My only wish was that Moira was there with me so I could send her in there instead. And with that, I've beaten Fallout 3 with only a BB gun. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day. Fuck you, Moira.